Let's get more from Motas Azaiza, who is a photojournalist. He joins me now live from Gaza. Motas, good to see you. You are among the few remaining journalists in Gaza who have survived the brutal onslaught for more than two months. And what really stands out about you is the fact that you have documented some of the most heinous and disturbing war crimes that Israel has perpetrated since the 7th of October, including the targeting of schools, UN shelters, the killing of children, women and the elderly. I know many people in Gaza have stopped uh, counting days, but it's been more than 75 days since Israel's brutal killing campaign began in Gaza. But the world is yet to declare a comprehensive ceasefire. What does this uh, make you think about the current state of humanity in the world we live in today? Uh, hi, uh, thank you for, for having me. Uh, actually, we start or we already lost uh, trusting in humanity around the world. Uh, we believe in people, the people of the countries, but we don't believe in the governments and uh, the world leaders. Uh, even from uh, the supporters, the countries that support, we just like uh, hear from them that they are supporting us. But no one for the last 75 days uh, tried to uh, to stand in the, in the face of Israel and the United States to, to stop this. Uh, even no one, like, they didn't even cut their relationship with Israel just to, to stop uh, the genocide. So we, uh, we are humans, but we believe that uh, what Israel and the United States government want to do they can do no one can stop them from doing indeed and uh, it's uh, very sad is it not there have been multiple calls uh, by the united nations uh, many countries across the world but israel still continues with its onslaught on gaza and of course uh, motaz every story uh, and every photo that you have uh, documented matters and uh, the, every story that uh, you have documented highlighting the plight of Gazans is equally important. But if there is one that stands out for you, which one would that be? Uh, the most <clears throat> terror picture I ever take, I didn't post. No one saw, saw it. I tried to post about the Instagram keeps uh, removing the picture and it was terrifying for me to, to post I need to see it I, I even didn't know that I'm, I'm taking the picture right now uh, it was for a, a baby they got him from the ambulance in front of me he, the brain, his brain was out so uh, it's the most terrible picture I ever took there's another picture for a girl under the rubble uh, like the time magazine recognized it as one of the best a uh, photo of 100 photos around the world, and now it's the best of the 10 pictures around the world. But uh, I don't care about all of that. I care about the girl who was under like a tons of, of rubble above her head and uh, the civil defense and uh, the neighbors trying to get her out, but there is no machines to remove the rubble and she kept there for like seven hours. Just they are looking to her, trying to, to give her some air and uh, water, but uh, she was deeply injured and no one could do anything. Uh, I took this picture with uh, a very deep sadness and helpless. Like I wish to do more. I wish like to throw the camera, try to hold the rocks and remove it above her. Uh, but uh, for sorry, uh, everyone is helpless. Everyone is hopeless and uh, we're trying our best to, to stay alive and uh, just to keep the world uh, remembering that we are alive and we are facing the most uh, occupation you know, in the whole life. It's a truly heartbreaking, Motaz. Now, according to reports, uh, 100 journalists have been killed in Gaza since the 7th of October. I don't think uh, we have seen a death toll of journalists to this concentration in any conflict in the past. I know you are a brave person who has provided the world with the reality of Gaza in the face of brutal, brutal Israeli bombings. What emotions or thoughts come to your mind knowing that Gaza is the most dangerous place on planet Earth for journalists? 
uh, before this war uh, war starts, I have documented many aggressions and wars. Uh, I'm from Gaza. I never went out. I just went to, to Egypt once as uh, like a travel to take some pictures. Uh, what to say the word? I I I want everyone from the world to try the sense of fear that I felt the moment uh, Israelis keep calling me and threatening me to to stop publishing and sharing. <clears throat> And uh, a lot of people like from them uh, telling me that you will lose your family, you will, we will kill you. And uh, the feeling of being in your bed at night uh, and hearing uh, the Israeli jet fighters bombing and hearing the sound of the missiles coming. And you, you just like keep, you know, and you, you take uh, an angel on the, your bed and waiting for, for the sound. So you know that it's for you or... Uh, they will, it's for someone else. So uh, if if anyone from around the world tried this feeling for two seconds, I don't need more. You don't need more to feel it more than two seconds. Believe me, they will stop this right now. No one will stay at home. Just they, they will go out to protest to their governments to ask them right now to, to stop this, to, to stop Israel for killing us. When it's all about, when it's all about Palestine, like, you see a lot of silence, but this this now this war, this moment we, we made a change that we are a people. We we love the life and we we want to live a normal and a good life. Well, Israelis want to kill us. Not that you want, as they say, that they uh, they want to take off Hamas or something. No, it's about Palestinians. It's not about uh, Hamas or someone else. It's about Palestinians. Right now, there is uh, a Palestinian getting killed in the West Bank. It's like Gaza. So uh, Gaza for, for us was safe a little bit before uh, this happened because there was no checkpoints inside Gaza, Gaza itself. As a Gazan, I was like taking a taxi, go to Gaza City, uh, enjoy my time, go to the beach. But now, now it's different. They occupied the whole strip. There's some areas you didn't reach, but you can't move to the other areas in the strip. So uh, it's not safe. And uh, I feel shame to, to say that it's not safe because we use that Gaza... It's the image of resilience. We are always been strong, and we're still strong. But no human can hold this for, for more. It's been 75 days. Believe me, if you ask me what is today, I will tell you I don't know. I don't know what's Saturday or Monday, or Tuesday. I don't know because we don't care. We need to survive. Like as a photographer now, after 75 days as a journalist, I'm trying to document what is happening and also trying to get water. I didn't even wash my face when I woke up because I don't have water. For the last two days, we don't have power. We don't have uh, diesel to, to turn the engine, so we can uh, bring the water. Also, the municipalities don't have diesel to bring the water to your house. So I don't have water for the last two days, even to wash my my face. And uh, now it's about survive. I'm, I'm trying to to bring food to my family and to, to document to find to find diesel. So I'm trying to survive, trying to to share with people, trying to reply to people who are asking. Like doing uh, a thousand mission uh, by one guy, so uh, no one asks if it's safe or not. We don't care. I know it's not it's not safe at all. But what what should we have? What what should we do? Sorry. Indeed, uh, you know this is a tragedy which is uh, extremely difficult to describe in words. Motaz, I want you to expand uh, on the survival part that he just spoke about. Just describe for our audience, how challenging, how difficult is it uh, for the people in the besieged enclave to survive and get access to some of the most basic necessities of life, such as drinking water? Okay, there is a lot of shortage in everything in Gaza Strip. And if you are a millionaire right now, and no one's a millionaire right now, if you are a million, have a million dollar in Gaza, it's worthless because you will not find something to buy. Okay, it's not about money or there's a lot of people. Yeah, there are a lot having money. There is a lot to have money. They lost everything. So even if you have money, you are the same of people who don't have anything because there is nothing you can't buy. Uh, you start your day if you are living in a tent in, in the hospitals, in the streets. Uh, if you are like evacuated, go to to uh, a friend's house in uh, in the middle area or Rafah and Khan Yunis, you try your day, you start your day like looking for water, 
looking for food. You can't save food because there's no fridge, there's no electricity from the, the since the, the first day of war. So you're trying to find a fresh food every day. Every day you have a, like a mission to find food. Okay, after that, you, you try like you try to take uh, to be careful where to go, where to move. Uh, you're looking to the sky. The sky is full with smoke after Israeli bombing. Uh, Khan Yunus area is uh, like it's a tragedy happening as what happened the same at Gaza. What is happening in Gaza is now having Khan Yunus. But there is a lake of uh, the media coverage because it's been 75 days. And I tried to go uh, to the nearest area to, to, to cover there. They opened the fire on me and another journalist uh, I have with me. So uh, I ran from this area. I didn't went back to, to cover because it's, I used to go to Khan Yunus every day from Deir al-Balah. I'm in the mid, middle of Gaza Strip. So I used to go there to try to, to get them. Yeah, some supplies or to buy if to find if I can buy something. But now we are in the middle. We are stuck like from Gaza side and from Khan Yunus side. We use like uh, the sea road, but it's not safe as yeah, as needed. So uh, you are like trying to survive with your life and to save your family, save your loved ones, and you're trying to find food. Uh, some people trying to, to evacuate, like, guess, to, to travel. So when they this end, they will go back to Gaza. But uh, there's uh, no building standing in Gaza right now. So the war will start after this war ends. There's another war that is going to start after this end. Because people, if they stop and they went back to, to Gaza City and the north, they will find nothing. They will, not, they will literally, literally find nothing. They will find no houses, no shelters. Uh, no roads, no uh, usable wa water, nothing. They, they killed the life in Gaza Strip right now. Indeed, and one cannot even imagine what kind of mental toll uh, this war has taken on the children of Gaza and what kind of long-term impact it is going to take on their mental health. Now, uh, Motaz, before I let you go, uh, I want to ask you, what do you think is the importance of speaking out against uh, Israel's crimes on social media? And to what extent do you think your following and presence has contributed to, to raising the plight of Gazans? Look, it's, it's been for the last 75, 75 years, actually, sure. It's been for the last 75 years of uh, treating Palestinian, killing Palestinian, trying to steal their land and killing their land. And the world was seeing through TVs, TV uh, channels and the media. Uh, but what it's different this time that I uh, I lose I, I use my basic language English language I studied English translation in the university as a university by the way Israeli war plans destroyed the whole building of my university they removed the whole university I use my basic language I use my uh, camera and my my phone to document the raw realities I didn't even like do some edits for the videos what I see. I publish. I don't even change anything. Just to let the, the world see as like they are they are living the moment I'm living, you know. So this is what make a difference with people. So a lot of people around or was waiting for something like this. And I, I took this opportunity to to reach every single human around the world to show them what is really happening. I a lot of people are was like faked by by the West Western media like Fox News, the CNN. There was always telling lies about uh, what is happening, and they've been always in the side of uh, Israeli occupation. But this time is different, and believe me, we made a huge effect. We made a huge change for the people, and a lot of people who never hear, hear about Palestine or Gaza, now they are trying to shout by our name in the street and protest against uh, the occupation, it protests protest to ask their governments to stand with Palestine, to stand with the people of Gaza and the people in ev of Palestine and everywhere to take their freedom, to get their country free of the occupation. Mataz Azaiza, thank you very much for talking to us here on TRT World. I really appreciate your taking out the time and uh, please stay safe, brother. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you so much.